In ancient Mesoamerica, maize was everything. It wasn't just a grain, it wasn't just how your city survived, it was the symbolic reincarnation of all things. It was the union of light and dark, of life and death. Maze wasn't just a god, it was the foundation for the gods. Or at least, that's what the priest was screaming as his obsidian saw came down on your neck. It's around 8000 BC, and a tribe of hunter-gatherers are migrating through the lowlands of southern Mexico, collecting whatever grains and fruits their ancestors learned the hard way wasn't going to kill them. They pray to the old gods, to the great fertility that controls their migration. They pray to the maternity and rebirth of the mothers that keep them alive, the mothers who sacrifice their very bodies to create more. But today that world is going to shatter forever, because today an edible fruit will be put back in the ground uneaten. A small sacrifice that will become one of the most impactful decisions of all time. Humans will plant corn. And with more seasons will come more seeds, more grains, more work, more sacrifice. But how can you put a price on controlling fertility? It's 4000 BC, and people no longer listen when the jungle speaks. Everyone prays to a new god, a fruit they call Eam. Maternity worship has long since been replaced by the manpower of the field, and rebirth is now not the work of mothers, but priests. And these priests' god is hungry. Society might be stratified, but everyone understands one simple thing. Corn demands more than just your sweat and tears. It wants blood. This isn't the fertile plains of the Ganges. This is a dense jungle in Central America. The life of the Eam requires the death just to survive. It demands the sacrifice. So they burn down the forest for the fertility in its ash. They bury their waste and bone. Eventually, they even bury themselves. They understand that for the corn to give them everything, they must give it everything in return. The relationship becomes so strong that neither farmer nor crop can survive without the other. It's a true symbiosis. Take away one and the other will die. This new agricultural reality is then turned to myth, and myth to religion, and people start to speak of the great twins of the universe, the man and the corn, the two who are one. They worship twin brothers who were beheaded but escaped the underworld only to grow back as the harvest, brothers who sacrifice themselves to be the great rebirth of society. Their maternity made masculine, reincarnation as a great cannibalism of the energy that sustains all things. And the corn that empowers this is now more than just a god, it's an entire way of life. And yet even here, it has only shown a fraction of its potential. There are still civilizations locked behind that shell. It's 2000 BC and a mother is dropping hot rocks into a gourd. Her people are the last in the Americas to get ceramics, so she can't just set a bowl on a fire. This is how she boils her dinner. Which I'm sure is pretty annoying to live through, but in the grand scheme of things, quite lucky, actually, because it means she's about to make one of the most important discoveries in human history. She's about to see what happens when you boil maize in limestone. And when she dumps her dinner back out of that gourd, it has morphed into something new entirely. The kernels have grown and changed color. They've puffed up and lost taste, but most importantly, they've washed off that outer shell. Boiling in limestone infuses that corn with niacin, iron, copper, zinc, calcium. If you combine it with a diet of beans, it makes a complete protein. It's more than enough to survive. It's everything you need to absolutely explode your population. And it doesn't even stop there, because unlike limeless corn, when you grind that hominy down, it turns into a type of flour. A flour that can be made into dough, that can be drank as a tole or grilled into tortillas. It can become tamales, pupusas, arepas, empanadas. It's the bread that will define Mesoamerica. 
And in this moment, that rock-dropping chef becomes the mother of civilizations. That bubbling gourd is the womb of a new era. It's the year zero and millions are rising up from the Masa. They create alphabets and trade routes and sports and gods. They build cities to rival those of anywhere on the planet. An entire jungle of temples rise up through the trees. The great towers that now control fertility. The fields spread so far that the city is having trouble keeping up with them. There might be millions of people, but that's just made things more complicated. Jobs are stratified, society is tiered, everyone has their place, so you can't just sacrifice a village to a sheem every season, you need those farmers. But the rain must be controlled, and the bar only gets higher. Death is now a finely tuned ritual. Pain isn't just a part of life, it's a requirement. Every major event or celestial happening, every great victory in war, even sports, they're all twinned with human sacrifice. Elites are expected to pierce holes in their tongues, in their ears, their lips, their genitals, and at sacred events, pull a razor wire through. The more powerful the person, the greater value of the blood as it burns. But while the elites might bleed, somewhere down that line, somebody has to die. If the corn gets beheaded, so too must its twin. It's only fair. It's just, it has to be somebody unimportant. It can't be that fair. So sacrifices are extremely calculated affairs. They shape the political landscape. Wars become focused more on kidnappings rather than killings. Nearby jungles are stripped of their tribes. At grand events, they play a game with a ball so heavy it can cave in the human chest. They drag out their offerings from their prison cells, drug them, and then have the local team beat them to death in the arena. When they're done, if they're lucky, they'll even mount their head above the stadium as in honor. It's just what the corn wants. And how can you put a price on controlling fertility? It's 1200 AD and everyone's hungry, but nobody is as hungry as God. It just never stops. More people, more forest, more blood, more war. Prosperity's become its own curse. There doesn't seem to be an answer to it. Fields as far as the eye can see, but people are starving. Add more fields and it just makes it worse. And that was even before the droughts. People are starting to question the gods. Six seasons in a row, how many people have to die for something to change? How many beheadings? And yet as the seasons pass, things get worse still. And as things get worse, the priests do what they know best. If the gods aren't listening to the sacrifices, the sacrifices have to increase. They aren't sadists. They're just trying to make the corn grow. But the people have simply nothing more to give. They're at their limit. You can only behead so many before they decide that their priest is just a man, that their gods are not listening. So some farmers decide to try their luck with the forest. Better out there than here. They're soon followed by their families, their friends, and eventually their communities. Without these starving masses to create the surplus of fields, cities start to crumble and collapse. The renewal of their harvest is no longer worth the sacrifice, and one by one, the great cities of the Maya disband back into jungle. It's just what the Eam demands, the final sacrifice. It's 1500 AD and a conquistador is tasting his first bite of corn. It isn't what he's here for, but it's the most valuable thing he'll take home. He doesn't respect the limestone that enables it because he doesn't respect the culture or the history of what brought it to him. All he wants is the product, to grind down that god until it's nothing more than a commodity that he can sink into the belly of his ship, until the memory of what it once represented is buried in that jungle like those long-forgotten temples. He fails to see the humanity in the stories that the local people tell, in the lands he spreads it to develop the very sickness that has long since been cured by that lime. But even in his failure, he finds great success because it is an incredible crop, and it thrives. It feeds billions. Even split from its spiritual pair, the Eam sustains its twin. It's 2021, and nobody's cutting open their testicles to feed corn anymore, or at least I hope so, which is arguably for the best anyway. It doesn't actually help, and it probably hurts a great deal. But as much as I don't want my head to roll down those ancient steps in the hope of a little rain, in an odd way, I sort of envy those who did. At the very least, it's good to have a reminder of the cost of just living one's life. 
of what it took to get us here, a perpetual thanksgiving, a ritual to show us that nothing in this world comes for free, even if we don't notice it. Corn gave the Maya everything. It gave them the very basis for their society. I understand why they felt the need to give everything back, just as much as I can understand why we've chosen to forget it. Food is more than just some product. It is the destruction of life itself. And although our societies may have become very detached from the death that sustains them, that death is still a fundamental part of our existence. We may no longer see gods in the corn, but we do understand the need for the harvest. Corn is not just some grain. It's not just what keeps our cities surviving. It is life itself. And is that not worth a little bit of sacrifice? This is Rare Earth. Such a chef you are. <laughs>